everyone, my name is Maddie. welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video where I'm going to be talking about my worst and most disappointing reads of 2020. So I'm doing both my worst books and my most disappointing in the same video, mainly because I don't have very many to talk about for my worst books. I've been very lucky that the majority of my books have been three stars and upwards. I do know my reading tastes pretty well and I tend to pick up books that have quite a lot of recommendations. So I do tend to enjoy most of the books I read and if I'm really not enjoying them I don't continue reading them. So I do only have a handful that I've rated two stars but quite a lot of the three stars have fallen into my most disappointing list. So we're gonna start off with I think the three books which I'm considering my worst of the year and they're the ones which I do properly have sort of criticisms for but then we'll go into the most disappointings and I think a couple of them might surprise you. So starting off with a book which is very fitting to be on any list for 2020 and that is Severance by Ling Ma. This is a dystopian book based on the premise of a pandemic sweeping the world and making life really strange. And it's interesting because I read this right when the coronavirus was first taking off and first becoming sort of a thing that the world was very aware of and first lockdowns were happening and all of that. And I think reading it now I possibly would enjoy it more because I think a lot of the measures that were taken were more accurate than we would have predicted for how people actually responded. And it was very interesting and the first half of the book I didn't love, I didn't particularly vibe with it but I didn't mind it. And then, this may be a spoiler, if you want to know nothing about this book maybe don't watch this but I'm gonna say it anyway. It's not like a plot spoiler though so don't worry. But the second half of the book suddenly veers off in a completely different direction and I mean completely. We go from managing a pandemic, seeing how the world is evolving, to kidnappings and cults pretty much. And I understand it's like a natural human response to the world ending is to seek community in these really intense ways and I get that but that's not the vibe that came across. We just suddenly switched perspectives, we switched lane. It was just a really weird one and it completely threw me off and made me basically completely lose interest in the book. I have no idea how this book ended. I did read it quite a while ago, but it has not stuck with me at all, other than to be really disappointing and definitely not really a book I enjoyed this year. Next up on my worst list is one that is also very disappointing. I mean any book that I'm rating low is disappointing because I would never pick up a book I don't think I'm going to like, so if I'm rating it low it's automatically going to be very disappointing that I didn't enjoy it. But next up is The Monster of Ellen Haven, which I have had on my TBR for a very long time. It's a Tor novella and Tor novellas are like my go-to for I'm gonna love it. Tor is one of my favourite publishers, a lot of the books they publish are my absolute favourites and I especially love their novellas. So not enjoying one was not what I expected but this did not do it for me at all. So this follows a monster and he sort of doesn't know where he's come from, doesn't know where he's appeared from but can't be seen by anyone until all of a sudden he is seen by somebody and they kind of start working together and I remember the first 10 or 20 pages of this book. I remember exactly where I was when I was reading it. I had chills down my spine. I thought the writing was beautiful and engaging and I was like oh my god this book is going to be phenomenal. After those first 10 pages it was so dull. It got into this really complex like city, town, politics which were not explained. I didn't know who anyone was. I couldn't follow it for love more money and I just didn't care and it was very boring and considering the book was only 170 pages long and small pages at that it took a lot of effort to push myself all the way through to the end. If it was any longer I wouldn't have, I would have DNF'd it but I decided that as it's so short I may as well add it to my Goodreads goal so I will try and finish it. But yeah it put me off reading for about a week, it just didn't do it for me and I can't even describe why. The writing style was completely mundane, as I said nothing was explained, nothing at all, like I could not figure out who anyone was. I was just lost, I was bored and I wouldn't really recommend it if I'm honest. And then the final book on my worst books of the year is possibly slightly controversial because I know a lot of people love this book and that is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ding. I rated this two stars, I do not get it. Everyone talks about how gripping this book was and how they couldn't put it down and they had to know what happened. I could not have cared less. I could have DNF this book at any point very happily. I didn't because everyone hypes it so much so I assumed it was gonna get good and I was missing something. Maybe I did miss something but I j it didn't do it for me at all. The characters were all very annoying and there was only one small section, a sort of flashback section in the book which I found interesting but that was one small section 
And I did not care about anything else. And the main sort of antagonist just spent her life pissing me off and making me annoyed. But not in like a annoyed way that makes me root for the people she's working against. Just more in a, ugh, I can't be bothered to keep reading this way. Which is not ideal when you have a rest of a book to finish. So this didn't do it for me. Maybe I completely missed the point, but the mystery didn't really do anything for me. The writing did absolutely nothing for me. The characters, 99% of them annoyed me. The, I guess, both starting point and end book point of the book were completely overdramatic. We went from like family drama tension on a street to burning buildings down for no apparent reason. And it just didn't feel believable or sensible or just not for me at all. And I know a lot of people love this book and think it's really interesting, so I do seem to be the odd one out, but it was a no from me. Okay, so with that out of the way, we're gonna move into the most disappointing, and I'm going to leave the most shocking one for last, because I don't think a lot of people are gonna expect it to be on this list, but let's just get started, because I have quite a few books to talk through. And I will just say, for this list, none of these are books I hated, none of these are books I disliked, I'm not even really critiquing these books. This is more of a books that did not live up to what I thought they were going to be for me, and therefore I'm kind of upset about it. Doesn't mean they're bad books, they just want what I wanted them to be, which is possibly my own fault for hyping them too much, but that's the reality of where we're at. So first up we have the utterly heartbreaking Cry as War by Nina Varela. I thought this was going to be one of my new favourite books of all time, and I mean it was a three star, none of these are bad, it's a three star book, it was okay. But I really thought I was going to love this. It's a story following Cryer, who is a automaton, I think they're called, and they're basically robots that were created by humans but then took over and mounted a revolution against humans and they now rule. And it follows Ayla, who is a human and her parents were killed by the automatons and so she wants to get revenge by killing Cryer. And it turns into a female-female romance. I knew it was going to turn into a female-female romance and I knew between which characters, but I still barely saw it coming. There was not much chemistry, I did not get the vibe of the characters getting together, I didn't really understand why that's where we were going with it, just it didn't do it for me and the plot didn't particularly appeal, I thought the technology could be explored a lot more and a lot more interestingly, just none of it gripped me. Again, it was one I had to push myself to keep reading, which was not what I expected, and I don't know if I'm going to read the sequel or not. I might do, but maybe not. But as I said, I thought this was going to be a really, really good one for me, and it was not. Next up is Beach Read by Emily Henry, and this I actually rated I think 3.5 or 4 stars when I first finished it, because I was caught up in the sweeping romance. And then about two hours later was like, I didn't really enjoy that. That was actually not as good as I thought it was, which was a shame. This is a story following two authors who separately go on a writing retreat because they're both struggling with their novels for different reasons and struggling with their personal lives. And they turn out to be actually high school rivals, but they meet and they set themselves a challenge of they're going to write in each other's genres. One writes like literary mysteries and one writes like rom-coms, romance novels, and so they switch and see who can sell their book first. And it was great fun, but I just could not deal with the miscommunication. These two people could have been fine the whole way through this book if they had one sensible conversation. Every time one of them was frustrated at how the other one was acting, they just mithered, got angry, and made it worse. If they just sat down for two minutes, none of it would have happened, and that infuriated me the whole way through the book, and I really just wish that had not been the biggest trope of the book, and it resulted in this on again, off again, on again, off again, high drama, high stakes, except it wasn't, and I couldn't be doing with it, which is a shame, because it could have been a really cute, really fun romance, but I cannot deal with the miscommunication or on again, off again tropes. It's just not for me. Next up, by far one of the most disappointing, was The Chosen Ones by Veronica Roth, though I will say I think I would enjoy this so much more in a reread, and I will be rereading it before the sequel comes out. So there is still hope for this book, but Veronica Roth is I say one of my favourite authors, I haven't read her Carp Mark series and I have no intention of reading it, I've heard some really not great things, uh, both in terms of is it any good versus actually slightly problematic, so I'm not going to be reading that, but Divergent was a series I grew up on and loved, and so when I heard Veronica Roth was doing an almost slightly dystopian slash urban fantasy adult book, I was thrilled and thought I would love it, and I didn't. Um, this follows a group of young adults, sort of like early 20s or something, who ten years before defeated the big evil. But maybe he wasn't actually defeated. And it sounds like such an interesting concept and I loved the way 
I'm just realizing this is exactly the story of Umbrella Academy. It's literally just Umbrella Academy in a book, but slightly different. And I love Umbrella Academy. That's intriguing. Okay, moving on. Um, <laughs> just a tangent there. This is what I get for filming at 2 a.m. But yeah, you. I loved the sort of almost trauma responses the characters exhibited. That was really interesting. And the character relations were interesting. But I remember so little of this book. I feel like I didn't understand it. I feel like halfway through, it just went in a completely different direction to what I expected, which I did actually like, but it just wasn't what I saw the book being. And I just remember coming out the end of it and being thoroughly disappointed. And I don't even remember my full reasoning of why, but I just did. I do think, as I said, the rereading it, I would enjoy it more. I know more what to expect. I know more what tone to expect. So I don't think it's one that I'd like unhaul and never try again, but we'll see because it definitely did not live up to what I hoped it would be. Another truly disappointing read for me in 2020, even more so this one because it was a reread of a book I loved the first time through, was The Devouring Grey by Lynn Herman. And I know a lot of people love this book and I think for good reason. The first time I read this book, I loved this book. I gave it like five stars. I thought it was phenomenal. This book follows a group of teenagers who live in this place called Four Paths, which is kind of run by the founding families and they're all descended from the founding families. But it mainly follows someone who has just moved back and knows nothing about the history of this place. And she basically discovers they kind of have powers and they're protecting this place from a big evil and it's all quite dark and it's all quite twisty. But I guess the biggest thing for me is I discovered this book does not work when you already know what happened. And I'm sure some people will reread this book and love it on reread, but I really found that I already knew what the big reveals were and it held nothing else for me really. There were one or two characters I really liked, but it did not do much else for me. And I especially found, which I found really odd when I first read it, especially in the final sort of battle scenes, the kind of last third of the book, there was a lot I didn't follow. And I thought I'd maybe read it when I was tired or I was skimming or something. No, I still didn't follow it the second time. I do not know what did not compute for me. I don't know whether it was the writing style. I don't know whether there were things kind of missed or skirted over, but I didn't follow it. I, I mean, I got the overarching plot, but there would be moments where suddenly people were in a different place or a, something and I just could not work out how it had happened, which is very infuriating. So it wasn't for me. Didn't love the sequel either. Yeah, it was really disappointing to downgrade this from a five star to a three star, especially as it's really queer. I don't want to make a queer read three stars. That just makes me sad. But yeah, it wasn't for me, which was really, really sad because I was expecting to reread it and love it. Next up, a wildly popular book, and that is Akatar, A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. I read this because of the hype. Everyone loves this, everyone says it's their favourite series or, you know, whatever. People love it. And people also absolutely rag on the author for no good reason, um, because people love the books, basically. So I was intrigued, so I picked it up and I did not like it. I think I gave it like a 3, maybe a 3.5, but I think it was more like a 3. And I, I found it so slow, I found it so dull, and it had every trope I should love, especially the challenges slash tournament. That is one of my favourite things. Give me a magical game or tournament or challenge and I'm there. So the fact that it still didn't interest me says quite a lot. Also, I was confused because I'd always heard everyone talking about Reese, like shipping Reese and the main character, and I was very on board with Tamlin, so I did not get that at all. However, I will say I have read Akamath since. I did four star Akamath. I really quite enjoyed it. So we'll just say that. That's worth noting. But nonetheless, Akatar didn't do it for me. I would be intrigued. I'm not going to, but I would be intrigued to see if I liked it more on a reread. Now I'm a bit more familiar with Sarah J Maas's writing style and like the vibe of the book, but I don't, I'm not interested enough to give that a go. But yeah, it was very disappointing when I first read it and I was not gonna continue with the series um, and peer pressure got to me. Everyone said that Akamath was better. So I read it and everyone was right. I will openly admit that. So I'm glad I continued, but Akatar wasn't it. Next up is a YA contemporary book and I have talked about this at length in another video which I will link there if you want to see it and that is Shine by Jessica Jung. Gosh was I disappointed in this book. I won an arc of this book and I was so excited. It inspired me to do a whole video reading books about K-pop which I'm so excited for and of the three books I read this was the one I did not like. Um, it is it just was so miserable. There was not a moment of reprieve, but not in a like hard hitting, you feel for them way. The main character just complained. This main character had moved her family from America to Korea so she could pursue life as a K-pop idol. And then basically her family didn't let her get fully involved. I can see it's frustrating. And she just seemed to hate 
training to be a K-pop idol. And I'm not saying the training's easy or fun, but if you have no passion for it, why are you doing it? And I can understand struggling through something you don't enjoy and struggling through the hard times to get to where you want to be. I understand all of that. But if you are going to spend 350 pages convincing me you hate it so much, I'm not gonna have a lot of empathy for you when you don't get your way. And it, it just, it didn't do a thing for me. Um, I cared so much more about the love interest than our main character, so much more. And even that was a stretch. It just, it made me so sad. And I understand Jessica Jung was a K-pop idol and obviously knows the industry very well. And there is a very good chance this reflects the industry extremely well, but it just, it was boring. It was miserable, I think as well in, the Western world where K-pop is already judged extremely harshly, a story being marketed to the Western world as for fans of K-pop to then basically just be horrible about K-pop for 300 odd pages just doesn't seem like the move if I'm honest, but they did it. And I have also had a few people comment on that video. I didn't know Jessica Jung, I didn't ever follow Girls' Generation, I got into K-pop much more recently, but there have been a few people saying that they are not overly surprised that her account is negative, partially on account of maybe what she experienced, but partially on account of how she exited from K-pop. So it might be one that you research before reading. I don't know. It just did not do it for me and was thoroughly disappointing because I really wanted to love it and I thought I would. Also, I just feel like with the bright cover and like sparkly and all of that, it was pretty pitched as a happier book than it was, and it was not that. Next, in a very different vein, is Exit West by Moshin Hamid. This was a book I read right near the beginning of the year and expected to love. It's kind of a slightly dystopian sort of literary fiction novella, and it follows a world where basically the world's just going wrong, awful people are in power, and there's like militias everywhere, and people discover these doors which can take you somewhere else but there is obviously a big price and a big risk in going through them and it's kind of a story about refugees and all sorts of other things and kind of the price you have to pay sometimes to get away from a situation and that was all interesting and I, th I think for me it was just the writing style. It wasn't particularly stylistic or anything but I just did not vibe with it for whatever reason. I spent the book quite bored, I wasn't that interested in it. Again for a short book it took me quite a lot of effort to push myself through it it just didn't do it for me and I think as well because I probably realised maybe 50 or 60 pages in that it wasn't doing it for me it made me even harder it made it even harder to pick it up and carry on but it's a very well regarded book it's won awards it's well loved it just didn't quite vibe with me but it is one and I've said this for a few books so they're not many on this list that I would be intrigued to reread in the future now I am reading a lot more adult books because I only really started reading significant amounts of adult towards the beginning of this year and there's a couple books I read at the beginning of this year which sound like the exact kind of thing I would love and I didn't and I wonder how much of that was just an unfamiliarity with the genre of well the age range of adult aimed books because they are written slightly differently they have a different pacing they have a different tone and I think now I'm more familiar with that there is a higher chance I would like them so it was very disappointing but it wasn't necessarily a bad book at all. Next up back to YA Contemporary and we have The Love Hypothesis by Laura Stephen. This was disappointing for a whole other reason. It was an all right book, it was good fun, but I got very frustrated at kind of the queer baiting in the marketing if I'm honest. Um, I don't think this was intentional, I in no way think this was the author's fault, but this is very much pitched as an LGBT love story. Like very much. There is no other than side characters, no LGBT content for the first, what, seven eighths of this book? None at all. Maybe the last 40 pages. It's a fun premise. It follows a girl who, you know, wants to be popular and all of this and she discovers like a drug that will make her give off pheromones that will make her more attracted to people and so she takes it and she becomes very popular and she gets the guy she wants which is a whole ethical thing which was quite an interesting debate and I have nothing wrong with it being just that but it says all over it that it's an LGBT love story and you know it's got rainbows on the cover and all of this and it's really pitched that way and then in the last 40 pages of the book I guess mild spoiler if you care about that this girl suddenly realises that she's sad she's lost her best friend, but she's actually not sad because she lost her best friend, she's sad because she's in love with her. And it's like, it almost was also slightly frustrating of like, you can't be sad because you've lost a best friend, it's only because you have feelings for them. Like, you can just be sad you've lost a best friend, but that's a different issue. So she has this realisation and then says to someone, 
I think I might like my best friend. And this person just goes, oh, so you're bi? And she goes, yes. Then gets with the best friend, end of the book. That's it. That's, that's it. And I'm not saying you need some long drawn out coming out. Any way of coming out is valid. Any way of discovering your identity or being comfortable in your identity is valid. But I just, it felt a bit off to me to market this book in that way to then have it as such a small almost afterthought. And I may have missed some subtext throughout the book, but honestly, I don't think I really did. So wasn't overly impressed by that. Next up, we have another one that I want to reread to see if I like it more. You can see that I'm just not willing to admit that I don't like these books because I feel like I should, hence why they're disappointing, not necessarily bad. And that is The Library of the Unwritten by A.J. Hackwith. This I thought would be a new favourite. This follows a library in hell run by a librarian and a book goes missing. And these books in hell are unwritten books. They are books that were not finished before the author of them died. And so sometimes the characters kind of animate from the books and the librarian is responsible for making sure they don't get out into the real world to find their authors. And basically a book gets stolen and there's this big quest that ensues to go get it back to stop it getting into the wrong hands basically. And it has queer rep, there's a female female romance, I think there's pan rep if I'm correct, like I may be wrong but it's definitely got rep in it. It just didn't do it for me. This is like the second book I read of the year and I think it took me two weeks to read versus my normal like three to four days. I just couldn't get into it. Um, everyone else is loving it and everyone loves the sequel so I'm definitely planning to reread it at some point and see what I missed. Maybe it just wasn't the right time for me. But it didn't do it for me. It didn't do it for me at all which is thoroughly disappointing. And then on to the final book I'm going to talk about. I feel like this is going to be the most controversial, possibly the least understood, because I gave this book four stars and it's on my most disappointing list, which I feel like doesn't make much sense, but it makes sense to me because I thought from the premise of this book, from the reviews of this book, from the kind of people who were liking it and the comparisons it was getting, I had almost no question going into this book that it was going to be a new favourite of all time. So the fact that it ended up as a four star to me is so disappointing. And that seems as a life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. And four stars is not bad. If I went into any other book and gave it a four stars, I'd be really happy with that. But because I was expecting to love this so much, it was really disappointing. And I'm not saying I was expecting this to be better than it was. I didn't go in too hyped. It just didn't end up being the kind of book that I love. It didn't end up being what I was expecting it to be, but that's not why I didn't like it. It's just what it ended up being was less to my tastes than what I expected, which is fine. And as I've said in previous videos, I am planning to reread this at some point, like absolutely going to reread it because I have since heard V.E. Schwab talk about this book at great length in an event and I feel like it revealed a lot about the thought behind the book which I think would add a lot to the book for me. So I'm very keen to reread it with that context and that knowledge but I think what got me for this is everyone kept talking about lyrical writing and this gorgeous like dreamy story and I couldn't find a plot. I am not saying something needs to be plot driven, I love a character driven story but it has to be character driven story. This was a character study for 350 pages. Not to try and critique a phenomenal author, but I genuinely think if you just put like a scene at the beginning that showed the motivation for this book, it would have been much better because this follows Addie who basically strikes a deal with the devil that she will live forever, but she will never be remembered by anyone. And she doesn't know this when she agrees to it, but she then lives for 300 years and we follow her all the way from the 1700s through to basically present day and no one remembers her ever. And then all of a sudden one person does. I think my struggle was seeing her move from 1700s through was very interesting in like all the different experiences she had and how difficult it was not being remembered. And especially at the beginning, I was fascinated because the sort of things Victoria Schwab thought to pick out as ways she wouldn't be remembered. The one that really sticks with me is she walked through a field of corn and the corn sprung up behind her because it, she can't leave a trace. And those details were phenomenal, but the problem was they got kind of rehashed. Like those sort of things were repeated over and over. And I understand emphasizing a point, but it got to the point where they got just repetitive. And as I said, I enjoy seeing those years, but it was very long seeing it. And we were also flashing forwards to the present at the same time, but there was no motivation to the plot here. She was just existing. And I realized that's kind of the point. She is just existing. She can't do anything else, but there did end up being a plot, but it was introduced so late. I just wish it had been introduced earlier so I could feel some motivation for her because I understand she's a story of hope and just continuing on and keeping going. But 
why? What was she fighting for other than just existence? It just, it didn't do it for me. And I'm not saying you need a rip-roaring plot, I just needed one singular point of motivation for any of the characters to be working towards. That's all I needed, and it didn't have that, which was a shame. But as I said, it was still a four-star read, I still really enjoyed it, the writing is beautiful, the characters were phenomenal. It just wasn't what I really hoped it would be. Okay, so that's all the books. Feel free to judge me all you want. Go ahead down in the comments and disagree with me. I would love to know what everyone thinks of these books. And if anyone does agree with me, also please let me know so I don't feel so alone in these opinions. But that's it. So give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Comment down below. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. Links to all of my other social media as well as the book clubs and read alongs that I host are linked down below in the description if you want to take part in anything else. But that is it for this video. So bye. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.